This is the video for the Sudoku game. Here in the blue note box it says, The goal is to populate a matrix given the following rules. Each row in the matrix must have one of each of the digits, 1 to 9, one in each of the nine columns. Each column in the matrix must have one of each of the digits 1 to 9, one in each of the nine rows. The matrix is divided into nine boxes of three rows, three columns. Each must have all the nine digits, one time each. Each game has a different starting matrix. Upper left, right here. You are to enter the missing values in the entry matrix. That's just below it, down here. Here you see in the starting matrix, the rows only contain a digit one time. The columns only contain a digit one time. And the boxes here contain the digits only one time. However, the ones that are zero are the ones that need to be entered. And down here you'll see the zero ones have an entry box. There are 100 games. And here's where you change the game number. This is game zero. Now it says to click next. The entry matrix, lower left down here, has the starting matrix values. You enter the missing values in the orange boxes. And here you can see the zeros have the orange, orange boxes. It will not accept an entry if it does not follow the rules. The entry matrix background will flash. Well, here if I go to this particular box here and say I want to put a 2 in that box, it flashes and says, no, you can't, because there's already a two in that column. Most of the time, you will find that an entry must be for a certain digit because of the rules. In such a case, the entry is said to be forced. You can toggle the force solution matrix on and off. And here in this blue box is where you toggle the four solution on and off. If we come down here, we'll see that in the first row here, there is only one digit that's missing. And if you test, you'll find out it's a seven. So if I put a seven in there, it says, yes, that's right. That's said to be forced. If there are zero digit entries in the four solution matrix, you must try different combination of entries. Let's look at the forced. In this case, game zero, all of them are forced. Just like this seven was forced for the first row, all the others were forced sort of one at a time. You put the seven in, then you check for another one that's forced and so forth. If there are zero digit entries in the four solution matrix, you must try different combinations of entries. A row or column will have more than one zero entry. Therefore, you have to try combinations. If there was just one, the answer would have been forced. we we'll click next. Try different values in the positions that are zero. If you fail, go and try different values. If you cannot get the answer, click on toggle the answer on and off to see the answer. Well, down here, this green box is where you toggle it on and off. If you think there is no solution, click the green box and see. 
all of the zero entries for game zero are forced. We saw that. There is no need to make combinations of entries. Many of the zero games for game one, though, are not forced. You must try combinations of entries. When you click for the forced solution for game one, you will see there are 10 zero entries. So there's a lot of combinations you'll have to try. Click on toggle the answer to see the entries that must be made to solve game number one. All right, I'll toggle that back on again with the answer. All right, that's the end of the explanation for playing the game, Sudoku. We're now going to go and click on program here in the red stripe to see the program that runs this game. Here on the left you see the instructions for the main program. Over here on the right you see these blue boxes. Execute the application, save the application, create a new one, create a new sub-program. This particular program or Sudoku only has three programs, the main program and two sub-programs. The other blue boxes here are used to copy data between programs or between applications. You could copy something from this game and put it in another game. Below here are the brown boxes that are tools that can be used with this P code for programming. You can list the values, the page text, name things, and name the programs, name the variables, display the registers and variable values, learn about the control registers, here's where the notes are put in, put in and so forth. Below this, there is a list of YouTube videos that explain how to build apps in this P code. Below that, there is an app that shows an example of using the actions of this P code. Here, if you look here again at the main program, you see a column that says actions. And all these names here are names of actions. Below that, this is a list of HTML5 P code YouTube videos. This explains how the P code works, how you program it. it. Tells you about instruction lines, the instruction parts, the values and the pages, and all the things you need to know to program in this P code. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to execute the application again. But first, I want to remind you that we said the application could be saved here. And when it's saved, it's saved under letters. Now I'm going to execute here. And we're going to go down to the bottom here. And it says start app A or through T. That is if you had changed the Sudoku game. You would have saved it under one of these letters. And then when you came to Sudoku, you could pick which letter you wanted to run. You want to run your version of the game or the original version of the game. Here, it could save it in 20 different places. Below that is a list of HTML5 P code apps, like the bakery and blackjack and box delivery and so forth. This list gets added to all the time you would be able to actually copy routines from any one of these applications and put it into your application. Alright, this is the end of the video on the Sudoku game.